Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rechak Dash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you. I came out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Uh, now, this lesson is going to be dealing with the new covenant. Okay? Now, the cov covenant is an agreement. Okay, so we're going to look up the word covenant. <clears throat> the word covenant is an agreement. Okay. Okay, so... This is what the covenants are based on. There was the first covenant, which entailed keeping the law, okay, which I'm going to read this in Jeremiah 31 and 31. This is where you get Hebrews, the eighth chapter from, okay? So this is Jeremiah 31 and 31. It says, um, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a, a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Okay, and he said that he was going to make that covenant with who? With the land of Judah and with the land of Israel. Land of Israel and with the land of Judah. So that's both of the kingdoms would have had to receive that covenant. Okay. It says, not according to the covenant that I made with their father in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I, I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws, my law in their inward parts. What law? The law of Moses. Okay, so the law is supposed to be in our inward parts. This is what this, this agreement in, entails. This is all part of the agreement. Okay, and write it in their hearts and will be their power and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So do all our people know the Lord? Do all of our people know Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai? The answer is no. Okay, but this is part of the agreement. When you, when you sign a contract, okay, once you sign the contract, all of the components of that contract are now in effect. You don't sign a contract and then oh, this part is in effect, but the rest of the components are not in effect. That, that doesn't make any sense. From time the contract was signed, the, the components or the agreement that is within the contract is supposed to be in effect. Right? So, so like, let's, go, let's go here. I'm going to get that scripture in a minute because the elder Apostle Kabar made a, an excellent point dealing with that particular scripture. But <clears throat> I'm going to continue with this. It says, it says, uh, in the, uh, matter of fact, I'll jump down to uh, verse 35. It says, thus saith the Lord power, thus saith Yahweh, thus saith uh, Yahweh, excuse me, which giveth the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from me, be, be, uh, before me, no, if those if those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Okay, so that that's it on that. Okay, so let me jump to. Hebrews, the eighth chapter. This is Hebrews 8. <clears throat> and I'll start at verse 6. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll start at verse 6. 
It says, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, okay, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, and the one that's the mediator is Yahweh Shai. Okay. When, uh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith, uh, after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind, the same thing we read in, in uh, Jeremiah 31, and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And this is what we're coming into. Okay, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Okay, and uh, in that he saith, in the, in the time that we're going to be, uh, no, we're going to know if we're forgiven is when we get that white stone spiritually. Okay, when we're delivered, that's how we're going to know. Okay, right now you don't know whether you, you are forgiven or not. Okay, that's for the elect. You see what I'm saying? And he said he's going to make this covenant with the house of Judah and with the house of Israel. The whole nation is going to receive this covenant. And that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth, right, which is a process, and waxeth, waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So he's not even saying that it's, it's fully vanished yet. He's saying that it's ready to vanish away. The thing is, is that we're in a, a period of grace, okay? We're in a period of grace uh, through the, the down payment that Yahweh Shai made, okay? So we're in a time period of, of grace. In that he saith, a, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So meaning is not fully vanished yet, okay? Let's get that. Right now we're under grace. This is what we're trying to this is what we're saying. Okay, we read that last part from here. It says, And they will not and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord, for every everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already. And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. When the most high speaks of a new covenant it means he has made the first one obsolete it is now out of date and will soon disappear so it's not it hasn't fully disappeared yet we're just under grace when everything when that's going to be fully when that's going to fully disappear is when Yahweh Shai comes back and we get those new bodies okay that's when it's going to be fully disappeared so let me get revelations 21 in verse 1 it says and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem okay which is the elect coming down from the chariots coming down from the uh, from the most high out of heaven okay from the chariots like I said before prepared prepared as a bride adorned for her husband okay so like someone's calling me and it says um and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Hold on, didn't we read that? A part of the contract is that we will be his people. Okay, that's fully going to be in the kingdom of heaven. He's halfway turned to us right now. He's not fully turned to us, man. It's only through Yahweh Shai, you know, the Lord is, uh, is, is somewhat dealing with us. Okay, and they shall be his people. And the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, 
nor crying. Why, why is there not going to be any death, sorrow, or crying? Because we're not going to sin anymore. The wages of sin is death. Okay, but when we get into the kingdom, we're not going to sin anymore. We're going to be perfect under that new covenant. It says, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And that includes the covenant. Okay, that includes the covenant. Okay, and he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right for these words are true and faithful. He said, what? I make all things new. So this is when the new covenant is going to come into place. Okay? This is when it's going to fully be in place. Now it's secured. Okay? It's secured now. But it's going to be fully in place in the kingdom of heaven. And I believe it says that in uh, Hebrews, the ninth chapter, <clears throat> some particular part, it says... Um, Give me a second here. Let me put this back to the KJV. Come back down here. It says, um, I'll start at verse 15 and read down. It says, uh, Actually, verse 16. You know what? I'll go up a bit more. Go up to like verse uh, verse 14. It says, How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, excuse me, excuse me, to the Most High, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament or the New Covenant that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first the first covenant, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Because according to the first covenant, in order to have a forgiveness of sins, you would need a sacrifice. Now, Yahushua was the perfect sacrifice, and he covered all of the elect in this time. Okay? He covered all of the elect with that with that sacrifice that he made. Okay? Because that's, that's according to what? That's according to the first covenant. Okay? But that gives us a pathway to the new covenant, which we're going to get into that. See, you have to understand the whole puzzle. All right? It says... For where a testament is, where a covenant is, there must also be, uh, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. And when you read, an, uh, I believe the NLT, it says it, it, it uses the will. It uses the example of the of a will. Okay, instead of saying testament or covenant, it says the word will. Okay, understanding it, it's an example of like a will. When a will is only in effect after the person dies. This. Okay, so I'm not even going to get that right now. Okay, but you can look that up. Okay, it says for a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament or covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the, the testament or the covenant which the Most High hath enjoyed unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, of the ministry and also all things or by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens 
should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, for Hamashiach is not entered into the holy places made with uh, with hands, which are are the figures of the true, which is in the heavens, but into into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of the Most High for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with with blood of of others right this and this is according to what the first covenant for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away his uh, put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and as it is appointed Unto, unto men once to die but after this the judgment so Hamashiach once was offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him and that's according to the first covenant because you needed a sacrifice and Yahweh was that perfect sacrifice okay and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation Okay, so he's coming to deliver the ones who, who are covered by his blood. Okay, now when he comes back, you see, that's when the, the, the new covenant is going to be in place. Okay, once our bodies are changed. Okay, now uh, the elder apostle Bar brought this out and this was an excellent point. Okay, because you have to understand when he comes back, he's coming back for the purpose of judgment. It's appointed once for man to die and then the judgment. He's coming back for the purpose of judgment. But there's certain people that are going to be covered from that judgment. As it says in uh, Ezekiel 9 and 4, you know, uh, the thawa, the mark in the, in, the, in, the, in the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry, that's an exemption from judgment. Now, this is Ezekiel 20 and 33. It says, as I live, saith the Lord power, surely with a mighty hand and, a stretch, and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you and I will bring you out from from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury uh, poured out okay and that was also in um when you read up it's, it tells you that okay and when you read isaiah 11 11 it tells you the same thing that he's going to gather us from amongst all these people i'm just going to get this precept real quick don't want to fear too too far away from the topic but we have to do precept upon precept. This is Isaiah 11 and 11. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set an, e up, uh, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Okay? Now, another thing. It says that this covenant is for Judah and Israel. Now, they said, oh, the covenant, the fact we have the Holy Spirit proves that we have the covenant. But how did Israel get the covenant? Because Israel was pretty much, for the most part, on this side of the earth. So how did they get the covenant? Because they would have to hear of Yahweh Shai. Right? Um, how can we? How can we? Um, how can we call upon him who we have not learned heard? Right? How can they hear about Yahweh Shai and they're all the way on the other side of the planet Earth? You see? Yeah, but that's the thing. Yahweh Shai went over there eventually. But in other in other words, my point is it wasn't right after he was um, he was crucified because right right after he was crucified. According to you, once the blood was shed, that should have been the, 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 we should have been in the new covenant. You see, so the ones that were on this side, they heard of Yahweh Shai. Plenty of, of Israelites on this side heard of Yahweh Shai. Okay, and uh, we speculate that the sheep that, that uh, he knew that he said he knew not of, we believe that was the him going to the northern kingdom. Okay. But when, you know, when, how long after did he go there? You know what I mean? And how much people did he speak to? You see? <clears throat> so, 
So, um, so anyways, um, let, let's get back. Let's get back. I just want to make that point. It said, and I will bring your, I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries we're in it, the bottom line is this: when we're gonna be made perfect is gonna be in the in the uh, when Yahweh Shai comes back because every everyone's gonna know what the dealio is, okay? All Israelites are gonna know what the dealio, and they're gonna have a choice, okay? The ones that have not been perfected yet, they're gonna have to make a decision, okay? It says, and I and I'm gonna read that here. It says, and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the out of your countries. This is Ezekiel 30, uh, 20 and thirty four. Wherein you were you are scattered. With a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt so will I plead with you saith the Lord power and I will cause you to pass under the rod Okay, let's read this again. Let's read the start from 35 now. It says, And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. Now, he said he's going to gather us from among the nations, right? This is this is in this time. He's going to gather us from among the nations, and he's going to, and he will bring us into what? Into the wilderness, okay? And there he will, uh, will he plead with uh, us face to face, just like he did in the old wilderness, but there's going to be a new wilderness, Okay, that we're going to be brought to. Okay, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of uh, of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord, power. And I will, and this is after the deliverance. Okay, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. So it means that. This is when we're going to be brought under the bond of the covenant after the deliverance and we're brought into that wilderness and so on and so forth. When, when we're changed, okay, <laughs> everyone's going to have a decision to make, okay. It says, and I will, and the elect is, has already made their decision. The elect will be perfected by that time. We'll be as, as the angels, so to speak, having those new bodies, man. The Lord don't, gotta, don't have to give us a pep talk at that point. We're coming to find the mother Israelites that... that Either they get they get down or they lay down, man. And I will purge out from among you the rebels, okay, of Israel, and them that transgress against me. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. Okay? So so that's that's clear, man. The Lord is going to bring us into into the wilderness, okay? And that's when, that's the time when the new covenant, the bond of the new covenant will uh, really be in effect, okay? Right now, we just had a down payment. Yahweh Shai gave us a down payment so for us to get to this point, man, for us to have mercy up until this point, okay? So that's why he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. So it's only those ones that have that mercy, in this time, the other Israelites, they're going to be judged. Okay. But the, 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 the new covenant entails that we have, that we, we're not going to sin again, that all the Israelites will know, uh, will, will know Yahweh Hashem Yahweh And will be changed. It said, it said, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. <laughs> okay. And I don't have to get it. You, you know those scriptures. I just wanted to, you know, show you. You know the right way to break it down and these people a lot of these people man they're just coming up with things just to argue just to pick things to nitpick to you know to argue you know technicalities and this and that and the third and they think they got something so that they can try to heap followers into themselves listen man you go ahead and follow the strange woman man because a strange woman is enticing a strange woman knows how to talk her mouth is sweet like honey but the ways uh, uh, are death. The ways thereof are death. And uh, you, you can be close, but no cigar. Okay? You can be close, but no cigar. Okay? And what about the rest of their doctrine? <laughs> you know, you think you're oh, they got it, oh, they got it. Well, what about the rest of their doctrine? What about the fact they said that King David is still around? What, what, is still alive? Where is he at? Who is it going to be? Who are they going to prop up as King David? Hmm? 
or the fact they said they can heal people on camera and we haven't seen one person be healed on camera all now you see what i'm saying but anyways i don't want to get too deep into that man speaking about them like that but it's just it's just the, the point of yo it's like people are just looking for things to nitpick you know so anyways with that lord's willing this was uh <clears throat> this was uh, edifying to the elect and with that i'll say shallow one